Hello, everybody, and welcome to Redmen TV and your latest Liverpool transfer news update. I am Dan Club, and I'm here for the next half an hour or so to talk through the latest surrounding the Reds and who could be coming, perhaps a little bit who could be going as well. But overall, we're just here for a good old chat about what's going on. How are we all? How are we feeling? I don't think I've spoke to everyone since we signed Dom Sobersly. That was good, wasn't it? Remember when we did that last week? That was boss. Um, yeah. Do feel free to comment, get involved. We've got a couple of new stories to speak about. One in particular I want to focus on. But yeah, let me know what we're thinking. Let me know who we want to sign. Let me know what I'm saying about the players. Tell me know if I'm talking nonsense. Um, yeah, And also, um, a couple of you usually let me know what the cricket score is as well. If one of you or two of you could keep me abreast of that while I was chatting as well, that would be much appreciated. Um, yeah, I'm sure... I always get on these when the cricket's on. That seems to be a thing that's happening. Um, really need to look at that schedule. Uh, Daniel Joy, yeah, big up, Dan, mate. Yeah, big up yourself, um, which isn't words I've ever said in a sentence out loud before. But here we are. And somebody's noticed I've trimmed my beard. I'll bring that up in just one second. It's a good way to start. Daddy Paul, oh, yes, it's Dan. I assume that's a good thing. Um, and if so, thanks. I uh, appreciate that. And also, I want to touch on this. Notice you trimmed your beard. Look five years younger already. Thank you very much. I want to know how, well, I don't want to know, but I wonder how old do you think that makes me? Because if I look five years younger, five years younger than what? If I look five years younger than 36, then I am my actual age. But if I look five years younger than my age, that's that's a good thing. Anyway, Daniel Joy again. Thank you very much, mate. He says, Mark Gahey and Colwell are solid shouts for our defence. So I guess that's a good way of segueing into what I'm actually here to talk about. Um, and it is that Liverpool are reportedly ready to battle Newcastle to sign Palace star. Now, this comes from Football Insider, and the aforementioned Palace star is Mark Gahey. So, it claims that Liverpool are in the race to sign him. And it also claims that Arsenal and Tottenham are keen. Obviously, left-sided centre-half, a player or a type of player, at least, that Liverpool do reportedly want to try and get in the market if possible. I mean, the most interesting, eye-opening and probably shocking line of all this is that right there where it says in excess of 60 million. I want to have a good old chat about that in just a second, but just a little bit more from the report. It claims a well-placed source has told Football Insider that London rivals Arsenal and Tottenham are also interested in Gahey alongside Newcastle and Liverpool. It does say that Palace's asking price could make a deal hard to do, even for the Premier League elite clubs. It says Gahey dazzled again this season at Selhurst Park. 40 outings in total, scores one goal, which is something I said that's not actually in the report. It says he captained the side as well on various occasions, his form earned the England call up, etc. etc. So, yeah, Mark Gahey, good player. Yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes what Liverpool want to do. I think there's a few different strands to this, personally. Um, 58 for two, the Aussies. Thank you very much, Daniel Buttery. Massively appreciated. Um, yeah, 22 years old. What he is, is he's homegrown. Now, we all know via various conversations that we've had with various different people, Liverpool are right on the precipice with the old homegrown quotas, and we are playing a bit of a balancing act with them. I think it's fair to say if we do want two more players, which I personally do, I want another midfielder. I haven't quite done in that department yet. And we need one of these defenders, ideally a left-sided one. We do need one of them at least to be homegrown. I think it's fair to say that. Well, we've only got one non-homegrown slot left, so it just has to be. Um, Romeo Lavia is obviously a name we've heard lots about, and I want to touch on him before I go later on. He ticks both boxes of those quotas because he's 19 now so he doesn't need to be registered and then by the time you do need to register him in two years time he becomes homegrown because of his academy upbringing at City of course whereas Gahey obviously played all his youth football at Chelsea spent a little bit of time at Swansea on loan and ever since has been at Palace so I think he would make a lot of sense in that case as well where he doesn't make sense is £60 million that's too much money like Crystal Palace, I get where they're coming from, but and by the way, because he's under contract until 2026, he's clearly a key part of what they do. He's a, he's, as I said, they captained them a few times last season. They're not going to want to give him up about a fight. Like we've seen this with Wilfred Zaha and Palace for a few years, actually. Like every summer, every January, even, there seems to be big, big interest in Zaha, but they never let him go. They never just let him just walk away. And why should they? You know, he's their player, he's under contract. We're going to see the same with Gay here, I think. Um, like I say, three years left on this deal. 
there's no reason why Palace should just allow him to leave to the highest bidder. They're going to want a certain fee and they're going to want a bidding war, actually. I just don't think Liverpool get involved in a bidding war for Mark Gahey. I just don't see it. I think if it was a straight line to him, if he had a release clause like Sobersly or McAllister for 35, 40 million, I think we go and get it done because why wouldn't you? Because like I say, very good player, Premier League proven, right age, right profile, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when you start talking about 60... No, I don't think so. Um, Dolio says, "Wouldn't you prefer Levi Colwell to get here?" Yeah, I would actually, and it's a it's a it's a point I wanted to raise while I was talking about the fee. So it's nicely timed because obviously I spoke to David Lynch the other day about the Colwell stuff, and he's actually started a little bit of a he started a new cycle essentially all by himself because we spoke about Colwell, and he said that if there was even the slightest chance Liverpool could get that deal done, if they got a little bit of encouragement on it, they'd be all over it and they'd pay a big fee for him as well. Now, I know the Colwell situation at Chelsea is kind of ongoing. He's obviously gone back there following his loan spell at Brighton. He wants to speak to them about, he wants assurances basically over what his role is going to be next season, which you can't blame him for either because on the back of such a brilliant season at Brighton, he's going to want to play football. He's not going to want to go back to his parent club and watch Badashile and Fafana and people like that play. He's going to want to be playing. So you can't really blame him. But I think... If you were talking 60 million for Colwell, I'm fine with that because he's a couple of years younger than Gahey. I think that the, the ceiling's a bit higher, quite frankly, as well. And again, you are buying from a rival, so Chelsea are going to hold out for that sort of fee. But if that was the case, I think Liverpool should be willing to do it. And me personally, I'd be more comfortable with it. But like I can say, I just can't see a world whereby we stretch to 60 for someone like Mark Gahey. Now, that's not to say he's a good player because I think he is. But if you offer me one or the other, which is clearly the question, I'd be all over Colwell, quite frankly, I would. And I think David Lynch essentially said the same. I think, like I say, if Liverpool have an inkling that there's a deal to be done, that Chelsea want to offer him a new contract. If that falls down, Chelsea are cashing in on players left, right and centre as well. I think we should definitely, definitely be trying to make a move. I um, want to have a quick look at some more comments before I come back to the news. Um Dylan McGurk says, don't know about you, Dan, but as much as like Lavia, it doesn't really make sense when we've got Pachetti. No, it's a good point, mate. It is. Um, it's one I've thought about quite a bit as well. I think what I wonder about with Pachetti, and I think he's, he's a brilliant, brilliant talent and one we absolutely need to make sure has a clear pathway to play in minutes because you don't want to block him. He's so good. We've seen it last season. And he walked into a bang average football team as well, by the way. Like, the biggest problem we had with Pachetic is that we overused him and he got injured. Like, he was not an issue whatsoever. Say what you want about individual moments in games. I know we had a slightly difficult time against Manchester City, but what a player. Like, what a player. And a player that we just cannot afford to overlook when it comes to this rebuild and indeed next season. Now, I know his injury issue is still ongoing and he's probably not likely to be part of the pre-season, early doors anyway. So there is a little bit of wiggle room, I guess, with options and stuff like that. But I wonder whether further down the line, we might see percentage players more of an eight than a six. Therefore, if that was the case, we would still need to sign that understudy and a bit of cover for Fabinho and ultimately Fabinho's replacement as well because we don't have that in the building and the Lavia one's interesting with that because he's very different to Fabinho in the way he plays a DM role he's more of a ball playing his reading of the game's really good but he's not this tough tackling you know six foot two plus defensive midfielder who's going to go and win footballs all over the place and just beat people up he's not that type of player he does it very differently, but he does it very well as well, I think it's fair to say, even in what was a bang average, probably worse Southampton team, quite frankly. Sean, massively appreciated. I know Aaron and Chloe upstairs like it when I bring up compliments on the screen, so I'm going to continue to do it. So thank you very much. And I think this is a compliment for me and not Levi Colwell. Um, whichever, thanks. Colwell could also be. Um, somebody's asked if he's homegrown. McGay, he would be homegrown if that's who you're referring to. Uh, Lavia will also be homegrown at some point, and as will Levi Colwell. So that answers all of the people we've spoken about, quite frankly. 65 for free, Joseph. Thank you very much. Who's out? Let me know. Um, yeah, Anfield lad 10, I agree with you, mate. I think Colwell... I, it's difficult to say he's clear. I agree with you in general. If, you, if you're giving me the option, I've already said I'd be all over Colwell, over Gahey. 
so he's clear in terms of preference, but in terms of like what they've done in a career, Colwell's obviously so young. He is playing currently for the England under twenty ones. We've just reached the final of that European Championships alongside Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott, of course. And by the way, Curtis Jones is absolutely bossing that tournament. So he's carrying on his end of the season through the summer. It looks like, but yeah, I think with Colwell, I think like I said earlier, I think the potential is just so high with him. He has all the assets, he has all the attributes that you'd want to defend him. He's classy on the ball. Like, I don't want to go too far. I'm almost reticent to say it while I'm thinking it, but he's almost like your Virgil van Dijk replacement longer term. Like, he's not of that quality yet, clearly. He hasn't shown anything like that quality yet, clearly. But in terms of what he possesses, in terms of what he has, if you had someone that good working under Virgil van Dijk for a few years, then I think you've got something for the long term there with him I think it's fair to say um, again this is such a difficult deal to do because of Chelsea and because of how much Chelsea wants to keep him but I think Chelsea wanted to keep Mason Mount as well and we all know what's happened there Chelsea are losing academy players left right and centre by the way Callum hudson Adoy looks like he's on his way out Ruben lost his cheek looks like he's on his way out obviously Mason Mount has just gone hopefully Levi Colwell can join him and head to Liverpool. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, let's have some more comments. Uh, Gay, he's not good enough. Adam Eldis. Yeah, I think... I don't know if he's not good enough, but I think we've on a higher level. Certainly for 60 million. Good Lord. Um, Gay, he isn't, isn't a big sign-in. Ben Jones, with member chat as well. Just come to that. Hi, Dan Powell. Hope you're well. Yeah, I'm all good, mate. Nice one. England are beating the Aussies at the moment. Just to let you know, and I feel Liverpool will get Lavia and with Colwell, it's just if Chelsea want to pay. Max for Colwell, 45 million. Okay. I'd be max for Lavia, 45 million, by the way. I'd pay over that for Colwell, personally. I think he's worth more than that. 20 years old. And also, you should remember, like I come back to the homegrown stuff as well in terms of what we need. He, he is what we need in terms of that he's brought up here come through the academy system here so he, he would never need to be registered quite quite frankly in terms of what we need and quotas and stuff like that but you're also buying off Chelsea and they're not going to let one of their brightest young talents walk to Liverpool for 45 million that's not likely to happen um, yeah Steve P makes the point abroad would get too better for 60 million I don't know if you get much better than Levi Colwell abroad and it's interesting, the Gonzalo in Asho stuff from Sporting Lisbon is a name I see him brought up a lot when it comes to this. And Mickey van der Ven was the other one. He looks to be Spurs bound now, doesn't he, van der Ven? But I think the in Asho stuff, David Lynch essentially told me there's not a lot in that. Liverpool aren't that keen. And actually, while we're talking about it, I've seen a report this week linking us with Pear Shears again, who was a man we were linked with during the COVID season when we had no centre half. I remember he's now at Torino. Um, but I've seen a report this morning from the same outlet, actually, it's Tuto Sport, and it claims that Crystal Palace are interested in pair shares. So you do wonder whether they're looking to replace Mark Gahey already um, before he's even left the club. Now, again, they could be just preparing for life after Gahey. Should he go to Newcastle? Should he go to Arsenal? Should he go to Tottenham? Whoever. Doesn't necessarily mean it's Liverpool, but it is interesting that Palace are also looking for defenders. And I do wonder whether there's something in that. Hugo Santos mentions in our show there. Um, yeah, again, David Lynch wasn't hot on that at all um, in terms of what he'd been told by Liverpool. There is a good release clause in, on him. I think it's like 35 million or something like that. So in terms of fee, makes an abundance of sense. But yeah, he also mentions Max Kilman, And I've seen Kilman linked to Napoli this week. And there's, there's reports about Tottenham for him as well this morning. So there's a real big dominoes game going on with all these left-sided defenders. And Mickey van der Ven, Hugo also mentions. And I wonder whether... If Van der Ven does go to Spurs, maybe that means Liverpool then act on another one or vice versa. You know, there's a lot going on with these players. It seems like a few clubs are all after the same type of footballer and we're amongst them. And those names are certainly amongst them. But out of the four you mentioned, I'll bring them up on screen now as well, just to let you all know who we're talking about. Out of those four, I'd probably have them in that order. To be honest, I might have Kilman above Inasho, but just only because he's Premier League proven he's done it in this league already. Now, I'm aware those words don't mean anything because what's to say a footballer from the Premier League in Portugal can't walk in and be absolutely outstanding, much like Luis Diaz was to begin with. But I think in terms of safe bets, I think signing someone who's already been in the league and done it and played 50-plus games that's clearly a safer bet. Like that's just that's just logic. Um, but yeah, I think out of those, Hugo, I think Colwell would actually be my preference, to be honest. Um, and Jacob Weddle actually makes a point just below. 
um, about having Premier League experience. Anfield lad, nothing's happened to Evel, mate. He's still very much alive and well. He's recently finished um, World in One City, which was boss, by the way. Well done to West Indies for winning that. Um, but he's recently been involved in that. He just has a watch alongs for us primarily. He doesn't very often come in for different shows and stuff, but he's still around. You'll be seeing him very soon. Pre season starts two, in two days' time. And then the matches start not long after that. So, yeah, you'll be seeing Neville soon, mate. Um, Carl Ed Hussein with a super chat of £2. We're not linked, but what do you think of Lloyd Kelly? Now, I'd have to check where he is now, but we were linked with him a couple of years ago. Is he still at Bournemouth? Let me just check. Um, I'm sure he went to Bournemouth, didn't he? We, he, he went to... Let me check. I, I, I'm talking when I couldn't just be checking, quite frankly. He is at Bournemouth now, definitely, because we were linked with him for a while. Um, 24 years old. Let me just see what type of season he had last year before carrying on talking. So he's a left left back who can play centre back. Bristol City was his club. I couldn't remember. Did he play much last season? Was he injured or something? Let me check. Again, I'm talking when I could be checking. I hate our transfer marks now gone to overall. Just stay at last season. It makes it so much easier. And over there now, forgive me. Oh, he played 24 times, 23 in the Premier League, actually. So he played more than a four. Um, yeah, played 23 Premier League games, got two assists and played one game in the FA Cup. He captained them for the start of the season. There we go. Big ankle injury in the middle of the season. That's where he was missing. And then not in the squad for a big run as well. Did he play against us? He didn't play against us in the 9-0, so he avoided that massacre. Now, did he play against us? Yeah, he played left back when they beat us 1-0 down at Dean Court, a game I went to. And I'm showing me aid for Dean Court because it's now called the Vitality Stadium. But I drove all the way to Bournemouth to watch us get beat 1-0 by Bournemouth. So thanks a lot for that, Lloyd Kelly and lads. Um, on the point, Calet is saying, a player we've liked previously, a player, again, left-sided, plays left-back, plays centre-half, a position I actually think we need. That is what I want. Like, there's been talk about Pavard and getting someone for the right-hand side role, which I understand. And I think in an ideal world, Labashain's out, someone's told me, thank you very much. In an ideal world, I think we'd get both. But this summer, for me now, the priority would be that extra midfielder and the left-sided option because I've said it a few times already on these shows and shows that are similar. I think Andy Robertson does a good job as that left-sided centre-back when Trent goes into midfield. It just doesn't suit him. His main attributes, what Andy Robertson does best, is getting up and down the left-hand side, providing crosses, providing energy, and doing that sort of work. What he isn't so good at is sitting back, playing as a back three on the left-hand side and doing defensive work. He's good defensively, don't get me wrong. I just think you'd want someone better defensively. And like I say, you're not getting the best out of him. Like I always reference this interview we gave right at the back end of the season about he'll still be able to get forward. He just have to pick and choose his moments. I don't see when those moments arise. Like there will obviously be times whereby he can go and maybe Fabinho can come and sit deeper, or whoever the DM is can come and sit deeper. Jordan Henderson, you know, Lavia, whoever. But in the main, Andy Robertson's role as long as Trent is going into midfield, will be to sit inside and play as a left-sided centre-back. And it's just not him. It just doesn't suit him at all. So for me, I'd like us to sign one. What that means for Costas Timikas' future is a different conversation altogether, by the way. Um, it's Crossbow with a 4.99 super chat. Thank you very much, my mate. Says, we should try and sign Piero Hincapi from Leverkusen. He's a left-footed centre-back and actually decent from what I've seen. Or Castello Lukeba from Lyon. Well, those names could have easily been there to trip me up, quite frankly. They weren't, clearly, but the way I read them out loud, um, that could have easily got me. Grace Old Junior, I agree with you, by the way. And yet, like I say, I'm sure Liverpool will be scouring the market for the right fit in this. And who knows, there could be a left field signing, quite literally, when it comes to signing this left footed centre back that I think we all want, don't we, to be honest? Um, like I sat here, was it this time last week or a little bit earlier last week? And at no point did I think Dominic Sobersly was going to be a Liverpool player. Lo and behold, 72 hours later, he's carrying our shirts like a Hungary flag and he's sat on the famous chair getting announced as a red. So they could shock us all. They really could shock us all. And I hope they do because, like I say, I, I'm desperate for us to sign the option that we require in that role. Um, another super chat as well. John Lee, David Blackshaw, top man. Thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. Super chat of £2. So it's one more midfielder and one defender. You'll never walk alone. It is for me. 
And I hope those thoughts are reciprocated by the club as well, because that's what I want us to go and do, quite frankly. I think if you gave me that now, the names we can discuss and sort of who fits into those roles, I've got preferences. Sitting here, my preferences, to be honest, if I look be Taram and Colwell in an ideal world, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it might be Lavia and a defender who ideally would be Colwell. Um, that would be my summer... That would be a 9 out of 10 summer for me. Let's put it like that. I think you've got your two midfielders, your two more attacking ones in McAllister and Sobers like, boss, happy days. Couldn't have asked for much more in that department, I don't think. You cover for Fabinho, who can swap and change with him in terms of minutes and get a bit of rotation in there and could also replace him further down the line. Brilliant. And that left side is centre-back that I think isn't a must, but is right on the edge of being a must because... I worry about our centre back situation without one. Because we've got to lose Nat Phillips. I think that's obvious. Now he's our fifth choice senior option right now. We're going to lose Nat Phillips. Reese Williams has already gone on loan to Aberdeen. That leaves us with a fifth choice. I think I'm right in saying of Javel Quanza, who has, and I'm aware Fabinho could drop in and do it, and Jordan Henderson at a push could drop in and do it. Not two things anyone wants to see anytime soon. That leaves us with Javel Quanza, who's a very talented young lad. Had a very good season alone at Bristol Rovers last year, but isn't ready for first-team action at Liverpool right now, quite frankly. And when you've got Joel Matip and Joe Gomez as two of your four senior options, there's injury worries there. There's major injury worries there. And you could also throw Canati into the mix, because although his injury problems are nowhere near as bad as the first two I mentioned, he misses games of football, doesn't he, quite frankly? He does miss games. So I do really want us to sign a centre-back, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's a good... Uh, it is a good point, this one, Caffel Murphy, and I've seen him sort of linked a few times. I'd love that to become a thing. Like, I really would. It's not... I haven't seen concrete links to it. The only reason I talk about the links that I do is because the conversations I've had or the, the conversations that have come from your David Ornstein, your James Pierce's, your Paul Joyce's, your Neil Jones's of this world, for instance, but... Yeah, Bastoni is certainly a player that I'd love to see at Liverpool. And again, would make our squad so, so much stronger. Like, he'd be a fantastic signing. Um, go through a few more comments. Um, someone just mentioned um, Mbappe for 200 mil. I don't know what's going on in the chat there, but it's not a conversation I will be embracing anytime soon, quite frankly. Um, okay, that's a comment that I'm going to bring up. Uh, Joseph Gerges says, if we are committing to the new box system, selling Robbo for 60 million wouldn't be the worst idea. 60 million is a thing you've said as well, by the way. I don't know if you get that, Fandy Robertson. Now, that's not to say I don't think he's boss, because he obviously is. But 60 million, wow. Somebody mentioned earlier, they asked me what Gavardiol was worth, and I actually think he might be worth on Man City. You're going to pay. I think he's worth like 80-odd million. He is the perfect solution to the conversation we're having now about left-sided defenders, but he's off to Man City, so forget about him. And Liverpool fan as well. Liverpool fan stroke talks about Liverpool a lot. I don't know what the difference is anymore, but anyway, he's not going to be ours, so forget about him. Um, I, I get where you're coming from on that, but I think I'd rather keep Robertson around than sell Timakas. Now, I'm aware you're not going to get the same amount of money, but you'd still get £20 million for Timakas, probably more. So... Yeah, I think I'd definitely be keeping Andy Robertson around as opposed to Simicast. I'd be looking to cash in on him and put his money towards whatever. Wages included in that as well, by the way. A massive super chat from Ben Jones, 1999. What a what a guy you are. Um, he thinks we'll sign Lavia soon, which I'm happy with. He's a pure sick, which is brilliant. Then he does think we'll get Colwell, but it will be a drag. And I'm so happy we've got Sobersly, world class, going to be a beast under Klopp. Absolutely agree with the final point, by the way. I've got such high hopes. I mean, anyone didn't see the one million conversations I had about Dominic Sobertai last week with essentially anyone who's ever crossed paths with the fella, then what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Because I've had a million conversations about him last week. Adam Bogdan, Gerhard Struber's former manager, the list goes on and on. I won't bore you with the details right now, but I do think he's going to be phenomenal under Jurgen Klopp. I think just how excited he is to play for Jurgen Klopp is a thing in itself. But when you hear the stories about his work ethic and coming in on days off to train and stuff like that and just 
he is obsessed with football. There's a line one of his coaches used to me, and I'm going to rehash it now because he looks to be obsessed with football. Jurgen Klopp's obsessed with football. Jurgen Klopp's obsessed with people that work hard. And Sobberslai will work hard. Not only has he got this ridiculous level of natural talent and his ball striking is phenomenal and so on and so on. I'm not going to wax lyrical about him now. It's not here to do that. But I agree. I think him under someone like Klopp is just a match made in heaven. And it's a proposition we should all all be very excited to see. And it's not long now until we will. Um, on the other point as well, yeah, I think the Lavia stuff is interesting. I do wonder whether the PS article this week will come to fruition and we might see someone go. Could that someone be Thiago? Possibly. But yeah, I think the Lavia stuff, I do see a resolution in that. And I do see it being Liverpool that sign him. I hope anyway. And before we go, we'll play a quick clip from our Neil Jones chat this morning about Romeo Lavia, which should also improve the encouragement around that deal happening. So I'll play you that in just a minute. Um, I mean, he is a pure six. I mentioned it earlier, he's not this tough tackling destroyer of a six. He's different in the way he does it, but he's very skilled in the way he does it as well. And I think actually in the box system with Trent alongside him, I think the way Lavia plays the six is actually more conducive to the way we're playing football now. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and you think we'll get Colwell? Wow. I hope you're right. Um, and if I think you're right though. I think if it does happen, I think I think it will drag on is the point I want to make, sorry, because I think it's going to be a bit of back and forth between him and Chelsea for a little while now, much in the way that Mason Mount United deals dragged on. There was loads of back and forth. That had been going on since like March, those links, and they've only got it done like, I think it was yesterday. So yeah, I think it will drag on a little bit, but if Liverpool are confident that if they wait and wait and wait and they'll get him in the end, I'd actually be comfortable with us waiting for him. I'd rather wait for him than pull the trigger on somebody less. And I don't say this often with Liverpool because I think it's something we've been guilty of in the past. We waited for Virgil van Dijk, didn't get him, and then got him in the January, so that was okay. We waited for Shuameni, didn't get him, and then signed off for Mello. That wasn't okay. So I'm not comfortable with us waiting for players, generally speaking. I'd rather have different targets lined up, which is something we've actually done better this summer when we don't get Bellingham, we get McAllister and then obviously get Soberslide. That's a better way of doing business. But for Colwell, because it's not a position that we can af- we can't live without strengthening for like a couple of weeks, if it did run on till the end of August, for instance, and it meant we got him, it's easy to say now I'm sitting here, but I'd be okay with that. So I hope you're right, Ben, is the point I want to make overall. Um, Hugo Santos, if we sell Fabinho, I'd go for either Caicedo or Paulinho. I've seen a little bit of their selling Fabinho stuff last night. Um, I don't know how much is in that, quite frankly. And I'm not sure about Paulinho either. Caicedo, absolutely. I've seen somebody make the point earlier about Max Kilman being 26. I think Paulinho is older than that. I think he's like 27. So, yeah, not a move I'd be looking to make. And I'm pretty sure, this is off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure Fulham wants like 90 million for him I see in early this summer. Now, I don't know what the air pollution situation is in Fulham. I know it's close to the Thames, but I imagine there's some pretty strong stuff in the air if they're demanding 90 million for Jao Paulina. Like, don't get me wrong, Smith out, Dave, okay. Don't get me wrong, very important player for them. Like they had a really, really good season last year, and Palini was integral to that. Of course, he was. So he's probably worth ninety million in terms of his importance to them. But you can't tell me if a football club turns up at fifty million for Jao Palini that they're going to ignore it. Like, come on, come on, Fulham, play the game. Like that's not something that's going to happen, is it? Let's be, let's be, let's be, let's be honest about things here. Um, another, oh, oh, Aaron. Speaking about being a bearer of bad news, I'll bring that tweet up in just a second. I've got a little bit of bad news. I'm not going to get carried away and say it's horrendous news, but it's some bad news. Let me just find it for you before. Oh, uh, okay. It's in the agenda now. Sorry, I'm I'm searching Twitter and now Aaron's put it in agenda, which is much appreciated. Um, let me bring up this tweet. It's from my mate David Lynch, actually. Spoke a lot about him. Um he has said, oh, it's not a tweet, it's an article for this in Anfield. He has said that Mohamed Salah is not nursing a broken toe, despite claims, which is good news, I guess. Oh, I see. Mohamed Salah has not been playing with a broken toe in recent months, despite claims to the country having emerged this week. Now, I'll be honest with you, I spend a lot of time on Twitter and social media. I haven't seen anyone says he's got a broken toe. Um, Mohamed Salah took part in the last match against Guinea 
when he suffers from a broken toe. This is what's been claimed as it. Okay. Who's Sobi? Is that the manager? Yeah, Ashraf Sobi. Egypt's Minister of Youth and Sport. What is going on here? Um, he's claimed that Mohamed Salah took part in the last match against Guinea when he suffered from a broken toe. He cut the shoe off to be able to participate and was determined to play despite Liverpool's refusal. However, this Anfield understands that the 31-year-old had only sustained a minor toe issue rather than a break. Oh, okay, yeah, he's got a little cut in his toe there. Well, not in his toe, in the where his toe is, in the boot. In lots of our games, actually. Bloody hell, eagle-eyed viewers. Zoom in now. So he has a little toe issue, it appears. Um, just rest, mate. And it says here, the incision to his boot has been likened to those made by fast bowlers in cricket as they look to relieve pressure on the ends of the feet. Now that I can attest to because I do exactly the same thing. I've got a little cut, little cut in the end of my spikes. Um, yeah, listen, he hasn't broken his toe. Mohamed Salah has not broken his toe. That's good news, isn't it? Any roll-ups, which is one of the better names I've seen in here for a while. Southampton, the championship, Lavia wants out. Liverpool not paying £50 million yet. That's pretty much spot on, quite frankly. Uh, I completely agree with that. Um, I'll answer your question one second, Martin, before I begin to wrap up. Diva Dolby asks, are Liverpool really ended their interest in Kevin Turam? I think they have. Um, I think ended their interest is one way of putting it. I think it's more what we can do. And again, it doesn't really come down to money because Nice don't want the world for Kefin to have. I think they're talking like 50 million, which isn't too dissimilar to what Southampton want for Lavia. I think it all boils down to what we can do in terms of homegrown stuff. And Taram doesn't tick those boxes, but Lavia does. And I know it sounds stupid, but ultimately you can't just go out and sign XYZ because you have to register XYZ and you have to be allowed to play those players. And if you can't get them in, you've allowed 17 non-homegrown players, eight have to be homegrown, that's in a squad of 25. If you can't register them all, you therefore can't play them all. So you can't, what's the point in signing them, quite frankly? Like, I really like Taram. I really want us to sign Taram. But if we want the defender that we do, it might not be able to happen. It might not be possible. And Lavia could be the choice instead because of that. And Ben Jones comes back, says the ceiling is limitless. He can become better than KDB. And linking up McAllister, I reckon Nunes will take off this season coming. And I do think we'll get both Lavia and more confident. We are more confident about Lavia than Cole will as well, just because of the Chelsea situation. Somebody else asks, it's Crossbow, Super Chat 199. Cheers again, mate. What about Bella Kotchup from Southampton? I can't read that name without thinking about Tomato Sauce. But outside of that, I've seen he was linked to AS Monaco in France this morning. Um, had a decent season for Southampton. Didn't quite stand out in the same way Lavia did, but obviously different positions, I'm aware of that. Um, and again, you know, raiding Southampton to relegated players, I'm not against it. In many ways, I'm all for it. And if some of these other options, your likes of Inasho, Mickey van der Ven could already be elsewhere. Bastoni, obviously, we've spoken about. Cole will. If we get to three or four weeks' time and they're not available for whatever reason, maybe we do explore different avenues. And a few of you have already mentioned a few different names now. Lloyd Kelly's one of them. I've still got him on my screen. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see us mention our different routes because I do think, and reports do suggest, it is definitely a position we do want to add somebody in. This summer, uh, Martin Davis, nice quick one for me before I move on and start to wrap us up. Gordon and Doak, keep loan, sell. Great question. Kate Gordon's about to come back into training, which is brilliant news because he had a terrible, terrible last 17 months of injury. Um, I would keep Kate Gordon because I think Liverpool will want to oversee his rehabilitation and make sure he's treated right. Not that loan clubs wouldn't do that, but I think Liverpool will be desperate to make sure that happens. So I'd keep Kate Gordon around let him play under 23 stuff and maybe a little bit of domestic cup stuff. And I'd be loaning Ben Doak. I won't be selling either of them. Forget about that. I would loan Ben Doak out because as young as he is, and he is young, I think he is ready. He's fearless. I think he's ready to go and play football somewhere. I think a loan to the championship for Ben Doak would be a brilliant move for him. If he could play 40 games across the season, senior, first team football in the championship, I think he'll come back so good. I do. I'm already really excited about what he could be. I think if you get that sort of football under his belt, 
you've got a real, real live one on your hands there, quite frankly. Um, yeah, Daniel Buttery, 85 for four, mate. Nice one, top man. Just going to make sure there's no, yeah, Gradiol is going to Man City. Um, Darvanius, unfortunately, mate. Yeah, just want to fly through the comments, make sure I've not missed anything particularly interesting. Yeah, Mr. Jane Mango, I've just mentioned Gordon. Yeah, he's been injured for 18 months. He needs to play under 21. Yeah, look at that. I didn't even read your comment before speaking, but it's like I did. Um, dead quickly then before I leave you, yeah, I just want to circle back around to Mark Gahey. I do want to tell you as well before I go, because I always use FB Ref, and I'd be remiss of me not to at this point. Uh, Mark Gahey compares to our mate Wout Face more than anyone. So we know he can score goals for Liverpool. Wout Face has already boxed that off. Uh, Jonathan Tarr, Leverkusen's in there as well. Um, Kirio from Arsenal. And there was an interesting one. There he is, Raphael Varane. That's who Mark Gahey has played most similarly to in terms of statistics, easy for me to say, over the past 12 months. So, yeah, if any of those names tickle your fancy and suddenly you really wanted to sign Mark Gahey, then, yeah, there's that information for you. And very, very finally, before I do leave you, um, yeah, Doke, yeah, Doke to Blackburn. Then he Blackburn are actually the club I had in mind whilst I was speaking. Obviously, we've sent Harvey Elliott there. I think Leighton Clarkson did a little spell there. Didn't work out. We ended up going to Aberdeen, of course. And Tyler Morton spent the entire last season there as well. So, yeah, I think Doak to Blackburn, I'd be all for that. Um, yeah, so Liverpool, ready to battle for Mark Gahey. A little bit of leave. I call will chat as well, stemming from David Lynch. And also it came from Football London too, suggesting Liverpool are definitely interested in the defender. But it remains Chelsea's preference to keep him, as you can imagine. And I did also touch upon Neil Jones telling us that there is a deal to be done between Liverpool and Southampton for Romeo Lavia, but it will be for less than 50 million. So before I say goodbye, I'm going to bring you a little clip from Neil Jones talking about exactly that. The deal that is that makes sense, both in terms of the fee I and mean, the wages, I think, will make sense for Liverpool, for most clubs, really. He's not, it is, this isn't a sort of, you know, Jude Bellingham or Declan Rice sort of Mason Mount situation, 250,000 or whatever a week. The, the wages will make sense. If the if the fee makes sense with Southampton and as James puts it and you know correctly, fifty million isn't doesn't make sense. I don't think for for any, for any club. Um, but I don't think it makes sense for Liverpool. If the fee makes sense, I think Liverpool will will make a move. Hi again, everyone. Um, yeah, so positive news from Neil Jones there about Liverpool's pursuit of Lavia. Alex King, yes, I am enjoying the score in the cricket. I'll be honest with you, like, I'll level with everyone now. I'm, I, I play cricket, obviously, for Liverpool, as I probably mentioned before on these things. Um, played it all my life, like one of the things, just I love it. But in terms of supporting a team, I don't really support anyone. I just like watching good cricket. So, yeah, England's doing well, fine, but I'm not that fussed in terms of who wins and stuff like that. So just so everyone's aware, not in a negative way, just the way I am. Um, so yeah, I just want to watch the cricket, basically, and let the winners be the winners. That's fine. Yeah, so Lavia, anyway, as I was talking about, yeah. Who knows? Liverpool could well make that deal done. I agree, though, not for 50 million. And I want to bring up one thing that has now well gone from my screen. Somebody mentioned Seth van der Berg being a possibility, sort of the cover as a right-back and play centre-half. In an ideal world, possibly, he's had a really difficult couple of years. Injuries, struggled at Schalke. I'd like it. I would, of course, I would. I want any Liverpool player to come good and have an injury-free time. Oh, look at that. Bobby Pegg. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah, he's missed under 21 championships as well, as you mentioned, mate. I struggle to see it happening. I do, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope he can stay fit, have a good time this summer in the in the preseason stuff like that. But I don't know. I think I don't want to say the ship sailed, but the ship is everyone's on board and the engine's getting started. I think on Seth van der Berg. And again, I hope I'm massively wrong. I hope I'm proved to be a fool. Wouldn't be the first time. But yeah, anyway, I just want to tell you, then if you want to watch the rest of that show with Neil Jones, that's over on redmanplus.com now, as well as my chat with David Lynch, my amazing chat with Adam Bogdan, who, by the way, I won't have a bad word said about because he's such, such a nice fella. He really is. And that's all on Redman Plus now. You can use code Bobby. You'll get Club Captain Yearly Membership for half price. So what are you waiting for? Bobby for me in the documentary is all there as well. All the full interviews. 
I've spoken to Kieran Maguire this morning, football finance expert, who's also really good at what he does. That's on there now as well. I've got another show coming up this afternoon. It never stops. It never stops. It really doesn't. Anyway, you guys have also been amazing, as always. Thank you very much for all your interaction. Thank you especially for your super chats. Massively appreciated. Uh, and thank you very much for keeping me in touch with the cricket score as well, I should mention. I'll see you all again very soon. Take it easy. So pre-season is just around the corner for the mighty Reds. But if you want to spend your days, weeks and hours celebrating a Liverpool legend, then check out Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, our three-part documentary series, episodes two and three, exclusively streaming on redmenplus.com right now with full interviews from so many of our amazing contributors, including the Liverpool skipper, Jordan Henderson, the greatest goal scorer the club's ever seen, Ian Rush, and a hell of a lot more. More right now, go to redmenplus.com. All episodes of Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, streaming today.